come up with is a list of genres and assign them a random number. We're going to roll our trusty CIP dice and determine the genre for the story based on what we roll. Afterwards, we repeat the process for our setting and a few character archetypes. Then we'll make all these yummy mix all these yummy ingredients into a brainstorm and brainstorm up a delicious narrative in a writer's room. And while we talk story, we'll have corresponding art being made for you find folks to see in the stream. All right, so we're ready to go. All right, yeah, so we're ready to go. I'm gonna get uh, the rolling of the dice. Don't, don't that that dice. Don't pay attention to that. That dice is a lying dice. It lies to you. <laughs> um, so. uh, we need it by the way while he gets the lion dice set and straight my name is ethan murphy with me i have my beautiful and lovely co-host um i'm going to assume that's my cue and say ari hi <laughs> <laughs> and our other lovely and beautiful co-host hi i'm nathan um <laughs> <laughs> as you can tell we rehearsed this thoroughly uh i had no idea that i was gonna be the first one talking until i started talking <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Life is full of surprises. We have Life to full of, full of take it by the reins um, yes. and live live it to its fullest. There, I yes. I, I crammed three parables into one. There you go. <laughs> and somehow they almost made sense. All right. <laughs> yeah, we're we're flying right. we're flying by the seat of our reins. I guess I don't know. Um, okay, exactly. so we're gonna roll yeah. for genre. Okay. Um, okay, so I'm gonna do roll. And uh, we got a four. We got a four. What genre is that? And the genre for four is fairy tales. Oh, yeah, oh add, nice. <laughs> Hell yeah. Nice. Uh, we can either have like a retelling or the original. But I, I imagine the idea more or less is that we're doing, you know, a somewhat fairy tale esque story uh -huh. yeah i think i mean like we can we can really either pick one um that exists already and like do a retelling or just make one up mm -hmm. okay. ourselves right on all right awesome all right cool deal all right cool so we got fairy tales okay now we're gonna go to setting and that up oh that's not eh. i'm clicking buttons and they are the erroneous buttons Okay, so that's that's another ten, right? We got another ten on that, so we got another D ten. All right, and All right. for that one, it is the cold climate. Cold climate. Oh, actually, so wait, that, wait, now wait. here's the I, thing I, about I, that, I, I, Ariana. Oh, Sorry, yes, what? And, and Nate, and Nate, cold climate can mean a few different things. It could mean either the tundra or the Himalayas, or it could mean like being at your in-laws' house and they're giving you all the cold shoulder and it's very awkward or uncomfortable. How are you going to play it? How are you going to play it? Anything goes in fairy tale awesome. land. Okay. Awesome. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. And uh, and what's what's funny is y'all are gonna get to uh, when you, when you watch the stream back. You said cold climate was the was the setting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, actually, I was just confirming that it was a D10. I wasn't saying it was 10. So um, uh, so oh. I rolled it. I rolled it until we got a 10. So so it's a 10. So we're gonna stick with cold. Oh, climate. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you game this system. We game the whole system. <laughs> things we can do with this. Yes. <laughs> so, all right. Okay. So, oh, and uh, uh, and now we're gonna do time. So we gotta do time. So let me. Uh, this will this this will go smoother in the future. I promise. Um, <laughs> okay. So I don't have a D three. So we're gonna do a D four, and uh, okay. and then I'm gonna okay. roll it and uh, and try not to get a four. We got a three. So what's three? Nice. Three is the future. The future. The future. Ooh, oh, nice. dude. Ooh. <laughs> so we're telling a fairy tale in a cold climate in the future. Wow. Okay, but like, is anyone else getting like kind of Blade Runner in Russia vibes? I am now. Ooh. Oh, Blade Runner go. in Russia. There we go. Now, I, I'll be honest. I never saw, I never envisioned Blade Runner as a fairy tale, but I guess it, because it does have a oh. unicorn and Ever James almost it is a fairy tale. Nice. Okay. Well, okay. Now. I mean, like. Mm, anyway, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're, not, we're, not, we're not fully through yet. We got. We got to. We got to keep going. Um. So. Exactly. Um, go, go, go. So what? Uh, uh. So characters. So how many characters? Uh. Do we. Um. Do we want to roll with? Uh. Hmm. Well, ahead. in fairy tales, it's usually there's a protagonist and an antagonist. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. So let's roll for the protagonist first and see what we get. Okay, yeah. and, and and do we just want to do we just want to do those two, or do we want to roll for any characters beyond the first two? 
yeah, let's just do the first. I two. feel like maybe two or three, but I I want to I want to base it off like what we get first. Okay. 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 Uh, yeah, I can make that work. Um, okay. I, I'll just pretend that I can make it work. Okay. Um. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So let's go ahead and. Da, da, da. Okay, so this is uh, so character archetypes. How many? Uh, how many did we have on that one? What was the number? Ooh, my friend, my friend, that number is literally that, that number is literally higher than your blood pressure. Uh -huh. uh, so whatever, Impossible. whatever number you roll is is fine. Just uh, go with three hundred for now. Yeah, let's say three hundred. Okay, yeah. so how many d twenties is that? <laughs> is that three hundred divided by twenty? No, Anyone good at math, please help. That's, <laughs> isn't that like, isn't that like a, let's see, not 15, 150? No. Oh, wait. Uh, yeah, it is 15. 280. Because uh, we don't have quite 300, and it would be bad if we rolled a number that didn't exist. Yeah, it'd be kind of awkward. Um, all right. So we'll say, yeah, just say 280. That's fine, Nate. Well, no, 15 is 300, because 15, because five, 5 goes into 20, uh, or 20 goes into 105 times. And so three hundred is five plus five plus five is fifteen. So I can do I can do I can do three hundred. So okay. I'm about to roll okay. three hundred. So let's roll it now. All right, let's see what we right. get. We got no. Oh, we're gonna split it right down the middle. One fifty. One fifty. All right, let's see. One fifty is, is one fifty. A mercenary. Is... Perfect. Perfect. I love this story already. This story is getting really, really. It's already. <laughs> it's I kind of, it, it ruined itself. To go see this. This yeah. is kind of bananas. Okay, and uh, and uh, let's let's roll again. So roll for the second. So let's go there, and that's one sixty three. We're sticking right there in the midsection. One sixty three. A Ooh. mystic. Yes, perfect. Oh. So we basically have a mystic versus a mercenary, which is very much like a D and D style fairy tale oh, set man. in Soviet Russia in <laughs> two thousand forty seven. Uh, um, Ethan, I hate to break it to you, but Soviet Russia is in the past. Well, actually, in the future, it comes back. It, it's, it's, a, it's a loop. It's a cycle. It we're, comes we're, back. Kind, we're kind of heading that way. Hot but... political commentary from Ethan Murphy. <laughs> hot, sli sizzling hot political commentary about fairy tales. Uh, welcome, welcome to CIP. This is what we do for a living. Okay. And, and All right, this... so I think we have... Yeah, I think do we want to just limit it to these two, or do we want to roll one more? Yeah, how about, how, about, how about we limit it to these two for right now? Sure. Okay. Um, um, though, so, if you just if you guys had your vote, who would you want to be the mercenary, and who would you, the who would you, want, would you want the protagonist to be the mercenary, or to be the mystic? I feel um, like a, a mercenary protagonist would be pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. it's a lot more fun. A lot more it's fun a lot more that. fun, and you can go a lot more ways with it. Yeah, mm -hmm. I agree entirely. Uh, and mystics also because mystics can be kind of like so op that it's fun to watch. You know, like the emperor or something. It's like someone take down an emperor kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. That, okay. that, well, that, I yeah. think I think that's kind of like uh, you know because you always think like the you know uh, like the old uh, the old wizard sorcerer in the tower kind of thing. Um, mm -hmm. Right. You know, having that be the bad guy. You know, um, uh, or you know, or like or a witch or something. Yeah. You know, the wicked witch of the west. I think is probably an excellent example, which is that's kind of fairy tale ish. Um, so, so yeah. So that's that's okay. an example right there. Right. Okay. Okay. So what we'll do real quick for any of those of you who maybe. This jump wrap, dropping into the stream a little bit late, or you turned your podcast on and somehow you hit the skip button a lot and can't go back. We'll do a quick recap on things. We can't go back. Uh, okay, we can't, go, we can't go back. So Ari was telling me that she um, is currently in Russia. No, I'm kidding. Uh, so the <laughs> the way the dice <laughs> the way the dice rolled out uh, for our genre tonight, we're using fairy tales. Um, the the setting is going to be in a cold climate, which can have more than one implication. And it's going to be in the future. And for our protagonist, he, is of the, he or she is of the archetype of a mercenary. And for our antagonist, they are of the type of a mystic. All right. All right. So real quick, what we can do then, I guess, is kind of just go over some tropes or uh, kind of things that usually happen in fairy tales, kind of get a few creative juices flowing, and then we can go from there. Okay. Um, the, okay. First, the first thing I think of, when I think of a fairy tale is, is obviously that it's got to be in somewhat of a fairy tales typically start ideal um, or obviously they set off, they start off really well. Um, if, you take, if you take something like Beauty and the Beast, it's a very uh, wonderful kingdom. Everyone's happy more or less. And then, and then the witch comes in and she you know, curses the spiteful prince who's mm -hmm. 11 years old somehow. Um, 
Mm-hmm. So I, I guess things should be, we, we have, probably should have some kind of a setting, some kind of a establish the order as being fairly decent and then establish what happens to that order to disrupt it. Um, uh, I don't know. Like, I, I, I like that. But what we have, so our protagonist is a mercenary. That kind of implies to me that the world is not in a great place. Oh, yeah. and so it starts out like it's really so you know Narnia, right? Like, yeah, of course, um, Jadis, uh, curse the lands to be winter. Yes. So um, I'm th- kind of thinking somewhere along those lines where the land is just cursed by this mystic, mm-hmm. um, right? To well, that- be winter, and then this mercenary gets caught up in all the stuff. Yeah. Um, and the the or since it's a fairy tale. Um, I don't know. How do we make it more fairy tale like? Well, well, so well, that's what well, I was thinking. I, I was thinking that uh, sorry, I, do, I did want to throw something out real quick. Um, because I actually want to challenge Ethan's uh thing about it being idyllic because there's actually a be- a whole bevy of fairy tales that like like Hansel and Gretel. Um, they were they were starving and they just essentially took their kids out into the woods to let them die. Um, this is Jack true. and Jill, yep. uh, or not Jack and Jill. Um, uh, Jack and the Beanstalk. Hansel Gretel. Uh, Jack, yeah, yeah. yeah Jack, uh, Jack and the Beanstalk. He had to take the cow into the thing to sell it, and he was a dumbass and sold it for some beans. You know, like mm-hmm. so, so like that. Like I, I think, I think Ethan, I do think you're right, but I think it's fifty percent of the time. I think fifty percent yes. of the time everything's great, and then crap gets bad. Fifty percent of the time it starts off poopy, and the trying to make things better is what creates the conflict. So, um, and I think with having a protagonist as a mercenary might be. You know, just just throwing out there. right. Well, I, I think I'm gonna do. Yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna take. I'm gonna take all three of our ideas uh, and combine them. So, typically, what happens is the world. If we're doing a, if it's the future too, it almost seems like it's a post-apocalyptic kind of world. It would seem ideal for the mystic to curse the land in some capacity, in some way. But mm-hmm. oftentimes they do it. They curse the land for a reason. Like I mentioned, the idea of uh, eating the beast. She cursed that kingdom or the prince and her, and his uh, followers or whatnot because of a reason. So if we can come up with a reason as to why in the future, I, I, you can even go not too much of copyright infringement with Frozen, but it could be that the, that the world was actually warm and sunny and great, uh-huh. and then this witch cursed the land with this freezing tundra. Mm-hmm. Um, and I so, mean, Frozen is based off a fairy tale yeah, where the character of Elsa is evil, like. Yeah. Isn't yes. it the Snow Queen? Yeah, the Snow Queen. I think it's the Snow Queen, yeah. yeah. Snow Queen. Yep, so, right. I mean, you know, something could have happened. We could do like like a Sleeping Beauty type thing where the mystic got shafted or like someone pissed her off. Um, and and you said, now you said her. You did say her. So we, we want to go with the idea of it being a, a female? Honestly, yeah. Can we do? Can we? <laughs> I, I wanted to. I wanted to too. I wanted. I wanted it so bad. I feel like I, <laughs> I did too. Okay, so what's, I, I, yeah. So are we doing like Frozen remix? Like <laughs> yes. Yeah, let's do a Frozen remix. We're, we're um, frozen remix. Yes. But, but like, um, I don't want to say better, but <laughs> <laughs> but not worse. Let's say let's say not worse. But maybe darker. Okay. All okay. right. I mean, most fairy tales were originally very, very dark. So. Yeah. Okay, All so. right, so here's my idea. I'll, I'll put it out there based off what Ari was really trying to say but didn't want to because she wanted to be politically, politically correct. Mm-hmm. I imagine this horrible, evil woman. I'm kidding. I, I, I see uh, a mystic woman or queen, what have you, that has frozen the land because of some reason where she felt spited or felt that the world needed it. And essentially this mercenary, this chosen hero, is basically, it ultimately will end up uh, getting to this this ice queen of sorts, and either it'll be through love or a battle or something of that nature, which will, of course, cause her to reverse uh, the state. I have an idea. Okay. What you got? Okay, so in the original tale of the Snow Queen, um, I, th- I, be- I believe, so this boy... It's a shard of of glass or ice or glass stuck in his eye, mm-hmm. um, and it causes him to become dark and is like he he becomes a little shit basically. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, the girl and like the Snow Queen takes him away to her castle, and it's like um, he becomes 
sort of her assistant or whatever. Um, and the girl uh, has to go and rescue him and get the shard of, out of his eye. So what if the Snow Queen, um, having coming it, having come into her powers, not knowing what to do with them, accidentally um, gets some sort of shard in stuck inside her, or or maybe that's where her powers come from. She accidentally had an accident, mm -hmm. and so it becomes dark and curses the land. Mm -hmm. um, and the mercenary is hired to, or or maybe they see that they have to um, do it themselves because nobody else will. Uh -huh. um, uh, is hired to go and like get the shard out. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah, I like that. Um, and so part of what well, then you, another thing you touched on Tara too is that a big part of most fairy tales is some kind of a quest. Uh -huh. Everything from Hansel and Gretel to Little Red Riding Hood, there's a quest they're on. Even Jack and the Beanstalk. So if we have it that this mercenary, in, as the name implies, was hired to do something by somebody, I think we should do that. We should actually have it that he or she is hired yeah. by someone that probably cares about this ice queen. Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. I think, uh, well, maybe um, uh, maybe this is just an idea to throw out there. Have it be uh, that this person is hired. May maybe it's not somebody who cares for him, but maybe somebody who, um, who is like, okay, like enough of this shit. Let's take her out. Kill him, then, kill him, yeah. kill him. Oh, yeah, yeah. They are, they are, yeah. He and, finds uh, out. The mercenary sees that, like, there's, they, she doesn't have to kill the queen. He or she doesn't have to kill the queen. Um, uh, she, they can just, like, they see a way to do it without killing them. Yeah. I had a, as my gorilla grunt implies, <laughs> I had a very good, I had a very good orgasm. I had a good idea. Or okay. neither. Well, I'm, but, I'm uh, hoping what it if... was the last, the latter. <laughs> You hope I had a good orgasm? Thank you, sir. All right, so uh, uh, I think what we could try doing is, yes, we can go the route of actually having it that they definitely were hired to kill this person, but they are not. But they weren't the only one hired. So on this quest that this oh, mercenary yeah. is on, there's other mercenaries that he comes across or she comes across. Oh, yeah, and so, yeah, it's, yeah. so it's basically, it's almost, it's almost in a way like whoever gets to this person and kills them first wins. But at the okay. same time, along the way, of course, you can have it that this person... So it's like an Atalanta type tale where do you know the the, the Greek myth of uh, Atalanta? Uh, sure, I do. But listen, <laughs> please what else doesn't? But refresh <laughs> us for anybody. Um, she's anybody. Like the fastest uh, runner in the land, and her is kind of sexist and stupid, but whatever. Um, her father is like, "You got to marry," and she's like, N -n -n -n. "And so um, he's like, okay, so how about you hold a contest? Whoever can beat you." Can marry oh, you. that one. Okay. Yes. She's like, oh, yeah, okay. sure, whatever. Um, so maybe there's like a like a contest like that. So what you're saying is that the, there's a contest even between the mercenaries. Yeah, between the to mercenaries see. to see who kills the queen. Like maybe a neighboring kingdom is like, okay, kill this queen, um, and then we can invade or whatever. Uh -huh. um, and they hire. I, 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 I like this a lot. I think what we could do then. I, I like all of this. But again, uh -huh. because it's the fairy tale, we can have a whole a bit of a hero's journey in it as yeah, well. You're right. I'm kind of like leaning into fantasy story. No, know. that's perfectly fine. We can do both. There's no wrong way to be Ari. So uh -huh. what we can do is we actually have it that the story, this is a story. So we can have it in the beginning because oftentimes they start with the, you want to see the hero when they're young and kind of learning how to become what they are or whatnot. We could have it that part of this here, his, his journey is going through the trials of becoming a mercenary. And part of the trials is he has to take, he has to basically either officially take it up, you know, kind of earn the right to become a mercenary, actually get licensed or what have you in this uh, world or kingdom, or there is a tournament and whoever wins the tournament gets to go on further. So if he has to train, if he actually show a training montage or he's so with his master ahead of time, uh, learning how to take down this queen, that'd be fun, I think, too. I think, um, I think it's important that we keep the character as starting off as a mercenary you want um, to get, have, have them at the same age? Get too bogged down in like training to become this thing that they already are. You okay. know what I mean? Yes. There's plenty we can do with the character already being a mercenary, especially if there is a competition, because that implies there are trials, right? Yes. Yes, it does. Okay. All right then. So I, I like that idea. Uh, yes. Uh, everything I just said, erase. Do me a favor, Nate. Go ahead and just erase, <laughs> edit, edit that out somehow and, on live stream. Yes. Uh, yes. So, so let's we'll do fix that. Post. We'll fix we'll it. Post. We'll fix, yeah, I'll fix it in, in, in live post. Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, we should definitely start off in present as far as the story. The everyone's at their age currently. We can have most fair. I mean, all fairy tales have to have like a once upon a time where you pretty much do the expo exposition dump explaining the world. 
But after that exposition dump, everything from that from then on is just in that time. There's no, you know, yeah. long uh, aging process or whatnot. Okay. I mean, we could basically, like I mentioned Blade Runner before, all we could need, not that this is going to be filmed, but all we really need is just an establishing shot of like with the Vangelis music uh, and the city and the snow and like future. Uh, it's freezing cold. Everything's shit. Uh, you know, <laughs> but, but that's but that's not quite fair. Fairy tales usually have like they have to have some kind of a. Well, that's not necessarily true because they just usually start off with the setting, um, already being there, and like you know they tell the tale from there. Uh, okay. All right then. We'll we'll, we'll split the difference. So much exposition is what I'm saying. I think <laughs> I, I know you don't like your setting. exposition. <laughs> you hate your exposition. And like what? everything right. else is fair. is. Because I'm not a fan of being like, okay, you're here and this is happening and blah blah blah. In words, you just you uh -huh. show don't tell. That's all you need well, for yeah. a fairy tale. How about we do it this way? How about we actually have fun with this? Because we're able to have a little subversion with the tropes. How about we actually say for for the opening, once upon a time, we say once upon a time it was cold, and that's it. And that's kind of like almost like the kind of the heading on the actual world is like they pretty much show that the world is. A cold, Maybe, desolate um, place, basically. I like. I, I, I'm throwing this idea out, and I realize it's gonna. It's. It, it sounds dumb in my head, and it's probably gonna sound dumber coming out. But I'm gonna say it anyway. And it's one upon. Once upon a future, it was cold. Perfect. I love it. I love it. What's because that sets it sets everything you know up. Once upon a future, yeah, sure. Cold. Let's work with that. Um, I like it. Okay. Let's. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna. I mean, not that we we really need to focus on. Um. The beginning necessarily the minutiae uh no. but i like it so yeah so we have our opening our opening line of our opening act once upon a future it was cool and it's a good line great like great line nate uh now you can go ahead and copyright that uh, <laughs> well um, technically I just by get... saying it we did um <laughs> uh do now do we want to start i think it would be kind of fun oftentimes in good stories they have a hook um something like, like you know in james the beginning of james bonds they have like a there's a whole action sequence or whatnot that kind of brings you into the story. We could open this story more or less at the tournament, at the mercenary tournament. Oh, oh, yes. Okay. Boy. And I think that what would be really fun too is actually introduce, this would be a fun round table to kind of introduce some of the characters. We introduce, we can introduce the, oh, yeah, the king yeah, like that, that wants. This is a really good idea and I like it a lot. And it really leads into my next thing, which was like, can, let's, let's, Let's finalize these characters a little bit more. Yes, and so I think the first things first is, um, I guess the way our so part of what it would be fun is you never as, as Spielberg once said you never want to show a character you want to introduce them. Yeah. So the first way we got to do this, I think we should introduce if we're doing this tournament idea, we see we, we would see our hero, our main character, almost last out of these people. You, you see, like, and this big, huge, giant, giant, uh, giant man here, this incredible, fast woman here. And then mm -hmm. the last one you'd see would be the the main character. So our right. main character should, should obviously in a fairy tale too. The main characters oftentimes seem the most unassuming or kind of the underdogs in some capacity. Mm -hmm. So if it's an entourment aspect, and we and we're obviously in a mystical world, we can have people that have all kinds of crazy abilities. The mercenary, I imagine, he's basically like a a thief in D and D. So he doesn't really have any powers. He has to be clever. He probably has really he's really athletic as much as a human as a regular person could be. He may have a few gadgets of, of a few gadgets or whatnot. He's mm -hmm. kind of like a not gambit, but um, uh, I'm trying to think of a, a specific archetype, not archetype, a specific character we can pull from. But he's basically he has to be a character that has no actual. Oh, he's kind of like a medieval Batman. That's all. I'm <laughs> of course, you say that. Of course, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm on brand. I'm always on brand, girl. Okay, okay. Let me challenge this for first of all. You're going with he, and I'm kind of thinking she. How about okay. we, we do both and have it unknown? Is he, the person's oh, in a mask. That's a good, okay, that's well, we need to reveal it at some point. But oh, no, I we, like, we will. I we like will. It's a, okay, ooh, 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 it's a knight, and they're in full armor. No, they're not, because it's the future. Fuck. Um, <laughs> no, no, you start nice in the armor. But, but you, the thing is, though, the, this care, the, are you saying that the, merc, the knight is a mercenary? The well, mercenary is like they're in... They're in a night kind of getup where yes. you can't see their face. Their head, their, like their face armor, is covered. Yes, but like but, you know, future kind of. Dude, no, no, you, like there, there is there is future armor. We can do. We, we, you do. Y'all do. Y'all do realize we're we're describing the Mandalorian here. Um, uh, <laughs> um, yes. Because if I say yes, will you pretend that I was smart enough to realize? Because I, I need um, I needed to get that out there cool. because we're like just people make would a see this. Big note here, uh, Mando. <laughs> 
But but like <laughs> I'm sitting there and I'm like I like I, I almost typed it. I was like I have to bring this up because like because because that's seriously like you know it, it Star Wars is a future fairy tale. Like it, it is, it's it's 100%. It's you are 100% right. It's we 100% are so that. stupid and you no. are so smart. No no, I I'm stupid for not realizing it. You're you're just slow and makes <laughs> brilliant. Uh okay. So so that's basically where we are. We're and now Obviously, we can, for all kinds of Disney reasons, we can't call him Mando or her or I'm it not Mando. Call him Mando. <laughs> you wrote Mando is Maine. You literally you look at look at the, the eyeballs. I don't know yet. <laughs> okay. But this is like for our our notes. Like we uh, we have the archetype, right? We have yeah, the archetype. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> what if we call him Woman though? Woman though. That way it's not Woman though. Like <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> All right, <laughs> All right. there we go. We have so we have our our, our hero type is basically okay. is a is a future knight that has all kinds of tech and gear, um, and we don't have to get list all the different types of weapons weaponry that this person has yet. Some of the some of the fun will be actually seeing them when they're in, when they're in combat, what they pull out of their of their utility. Yeah, I don't whatnot. think we need to focus on yeah. like equipment. We just need to focus on. Do they win? Do they lose? What are the next trials and the rest of the story? Yes, I agree. Yeah, I agree. Okay. All right. Now, uh, so also, I wanted to say, since it opens on a tournament that you mentioned, like we have a really simple, easy introducing the character, like because we have there's at tournaments there is always like a caller. Um, a, uh, what are they called? Even an MC, basically. A Oh yeah, well, there's yeah. a cry, yeah in the pet yeah they call them a cry, but you... so they can be like and blah from the blah blah blah. That's verbatim. <laughs> so They'd say the yes. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I, we can we can call him the MC Crier to make this call that way. Kind of combined idea. Crier. That's what, that's let's name let's name that person that I am MC Crier. Uh, Mick Crier. Mick Crier. That's his name <laughs> or her name. I, well, Crier. I just named our protagonist Blah from Blah Blah Blah. So perfect. Um... <laughs> 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 all right there we go so okay um, so we have blah we have blah now um what happens i, I, I think... assume that they win some kind of preliminary thing well it'll be because it, like most tournaments we, there's 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 one of two ways to do this we can either have it that all of them go in there at once in one big free-for-all smash brothers style battle or it is a um a process like you know there's the tournament like of Tournament of Champions, we have, it's always one versus one until it's just the last one left standing kind of thing, or, uh, out of all these uh, matchups. Right, um, but which my way question do we have to is, go? if we're going to have multiple people, um, then they then there can't only been, oh, whoa, okay, grammar just Language. completely escaped me. Um, there can only be, be one winner, right? Unless we want to do that. Well, uh, yeah, I guess that's part of it. Are we establishing that whoever wins this tournament is the person that's allowed, that's the the sol the solitary person that's granted the privilege of being I able to? I kind of like to, that to, a lot. To be I honest, I do too. I do too. I think you what we need that? to, I think part of what this 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 world is is meant to be is a future. It's a cruel future world, and pretty much this tournament is meant to. Um, you'd have to be the best of the best in order to even stand a chance at taking down this evil queen. Yeah. So it's, it's, this this tournament is almost is more as a favor. We're trying to spare you the harshness of having to deal with the world out there to take on this queen. Uh, by the way, I think maybe we could have it that this tournament is held insularly in some, inside some kind of like a nice, you know, future kingdom or whatnot, and you have to like open the when you open the main doors to go out to the the real rest of the world. It's it's a, it, it's a kind of a dystopian future, so it's very desolate. There's not if the main city that they're in is safe, more or less. It has all kinds of resources. But once you travel outwards, that's just kind of it's, it's a no man's land kind of thing, mm -hmm. right? Is that, does that work, Nate? Yeah, that works for me. Sorry, I was uh, I, I I was I was tinkering in my in my cave. Um, okay. Right. Yeah, I like that. Okay. One one thing. Um. So so how much how long do we want this uh this tournament to be part of the story? Like, is it is it just going to be essentially the the uh, character introduction piece and then he wins and we go on or is this going to be like act yeah. one act two yeah that's the... what i was thinking okay. I, I think i think it'd be fun if we did it as more or less the cold open like okay. um yeah we also we also the mandalorian the mandalorian the, the actual opening credits for the first episode comes after he 
he's in that bar and takes all those guys down and he says you can come either warm or cold and then, yeah. the, then the credits pop up so okay. a lot of action happens first and then that's how then you go to the credits so i think we should do the same thing here we, we hit the ground running saying um the op nate's uh patented opening line of once upon a future it was cold or what was the, what was the line Nate? once upon yeah, a future once upon a future it was cold it was cold yeah. perfect this is uh, very tarantino and i like it a lot <laughs> okay all right uh, uh so once upon a future it was cold right and then we actually we kind of you know fade in or cut over to uh this big huge sprawling kind of like a, mm -hmm. a futuristic coliseum the, the roar of a crowd like ah, roar of a crowd yeah absolutely like yeah. introductions and it's a gladiatorial type thing except yes um uh in the future future right. gladiatorial stuff <laughs> well, but part of what we can do, I think we should do, we should go all out as far as having it be. I think we should do a, a last man standing. Every and every competitor gets in the ring, arena at the same time, and it's a last man standing. Yeah, I think that right. would be good, especially being that it's this is gonna this isn't going to be a long drawn out thing. So I think yeah, I definitely right. think having it be a last man standing thing would be good because then you can see the action and you can see him taking everybody out, and there there be a lot of tension built there. Like, is he gonna win? Is he not? Or he or she? You know. Uh, them. Right, we don't know. We don't they, know. They, um, yeah, they, they, they. Thank you. Yeah, they. They, they are they going to win? Are they not? And then, and then they win, and it's like, okay, cool. Then you got to release so that, that really helps with the pacing, and then you work in like start getting into the story and the conflict and all that. I like that. Right, and part of it is as well is that we don't know who's actually going to win, even though we're seeing all these characters. Let's pretend there are no trailers uh, for the for this movie. Yeah, all we're, we're just seeing all these characters being introduced by the by Mick Cryer. Right. Oh, so yeah, we don't yeah. actually know who's going to win. So seeing all 10 whatever competitors out there on the field at once, we're slowly realizing who, who the best one is. And it, it may also seem like, again, we may, our, our character will probably look smaller than most of the other characters, will look simpler, look more basic yeah. than the rest of them. The other, characters, the other competitors may seem big and loud and boisterous, have fancy gear, um, have, have people cheering for them, even, even have like a harem following behind them or whatnot. But our, 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 our lead, our character... Uh, blah blah is the most basic looking, or is this is kind of the simplest, meekest one essentially? He's he is yeah, a yeah, true because yeah. we want to we want to root for an underdog. Yeah. We want to root for an underdog. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think he's probably going to be based off the way we, we've described him. He'll probably be, or she, they'll be, uh, kind of uh, more soft spoken. Won't talk a lot. They're. I don't really imagine them talking um, until the like until the entire tournament is over. Yes, I that's, yeah, we have yeah. to do it that way. Yeah, yeah, we have to do it that way. And in the, the first, his uh, opening or their opening line will be something, something pretty, pretty quick and pretty clever, pretty witty. That's, that kind of sums everything up. Mm -hmm. But we'll get there when we get there. So, so uh, what happens after the tournament? So they win. They win the tournament. Um, and I, I think it would be kind of fun if everyone's kind of surprised that they won the tournament. Uh, yeah. They win the tournament, and they're basically given. I guess it would have to be. Like a, like a, it's, it is a fairy tale, so they're given a. It's a future fairy tale. So as, as opposed to a map leading to where the queen is, it'd be like a GPS location on their phone mm -hmm. or a digital device or something like that, that they only they have the access code to go see. Because they, they, uh -huh. part of the quest is finding where this person is. So they have to have some kind oh, of... Oh, okay. So they don't already know where the queen is. Yeah. It's no. like a hidden type of like a Superman type thing. Um, the or Fortress of Solitude. Yeah. Yeah, and it may, I guess maybe the, the G, it wouldn't have a GPS directly to where the Ice Queen is because it may be that they don't actually know, but they would be, have to be given some kind of something to start the journey off. Something that, like, because you've won this, here's what you get to start your journey as far as a heading where you can, where you can go. Yeah. Um, right. Okay. Um, so they would probably win. There may be that there's people out there in the, um, um, the, the kind of the Arctic open mm -hmm. dystopian future. There's, there's people out there that, that have kind of made little villages or whatnot. And it's uh, like a, a GPS to the next location that's closer towards where they believe the queen is. Like, and it may be also that you can tell which direction she's in because it gets colder and that's, it's that much fiercer and that much harsher. Right. As you, as you close it, close it to, their, their kingdom may be somewhat warmer compared to everywhere else because it's the furthest away and he has the longest journey to go or they have the longest journey to, to traverse to get there. I'm I'm one one thing I wanted to throw out there that I'm thinking about, especially with considering that this is a fairy tale and that um, and so you know we're we're pulling pretty heavily from two recent pieces of pop culture. One is is Mandalorian and one is um Frozen, and I think I think with the Frozen bit 
you know, w- one of the things is they, like you said, it's 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 the 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 colder and more harsh. You know, that's where she is. Um, I'm I'm wondering. Yeah, I think I think maybe have it be that, and maybe not even so much the the GPS, but maybe it's like a like a weather thing almost, <laughs> like where uh, where the storm is, like where perfect. where the where the right, storm right, is. Right, right, right. Yep, yep. Um, like a future weather vane that kind of. Yep. Perfect. Yeah, because it's not like she's in hiding. You know, like right. it's, yeah, it's know. you know, she's she's just trying to get away from everybody, um, just because she's just you know she thinks the world is you know forsaken her, and so she's just like, all right, well, f you guys. And, um, and, you know, it's, it's the classic thing of everybody, you know, thinks that she did it on purpose, but maybe she didn't, but yeah, I think right. it's like, yeah, maybe... well, well, yeah I, I love that idea. We're definitely gonna go with that. But one thing that you brought up that made sense, that's, uh, we haven't actually got into her motivation yet as far as why, why she's doing this. And we don't need to worry about that. That's fine. I actually kind of like to be in the anonymity of it right now, but that is something we'll have to, I guess, over the course of this character's journey, they're going to come across some clue. They'll discover clues as to why she's doing this. It may be that the character, it may be that in this world, the people themselves don't even know why this Ice Queen did what she's done. Yeah. Yeah, I think... Or, that, or what's I, happened. Yeah. Yeah. It's just they see the fallout um, and assume that it was something done out of malice, maybe. Right. Yeah. They, yeah. And that's it. Because they assume it's done out of malice, they also assume she needs to be killed in order, in order to change mm-hmm. it or, set, or yeah. fix it. Okay. All right, then. Okay, so yeah, that works. The, 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 the I guess the, the key item the person gets is a weather vane. And also, because it is a fairy tale they'd probably be given some kind of special items to help them on their journey as far as like, maybe like they only had, the, the part of the tournament is they only had one particular like, uh, something that helps people traverse extreme cold. So it could be that he gets like a magic, it's a, it's a fantasy, so why not have him give him like a super cloak or something like that that helps him survive longer in the, uh, you know, in frozen winds than a regular person could, or he gets like a magic flame kind hmm. of torch or something like that. Uh, that could be cool. Although I'm, I'm kind of thinking like maybe a Frodo thing, where he, he's given the light of Erendil from Galadriel. Perfect. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, but but a, f- a future version of that. But so like a future, future a future version, and they're yeah. just like, here you go. We don't know if it works. Have fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, have, so I think it should be three items. Then the, the the champion gets these three items. First one is the. There's the futuristic weather vane that, that points them to the furthest, coldest point, or the coldest direction, essentially. And the next thing would be some kind of article of clothing that helps him survive longer, and also it'd be kind of cool that his, his clothing gets updated once, he, once he's won the tournament, because he's going to go through a whole bunch of battle damage, or she, he's going to go through a whole bunch of battle damage in the fight, what have you, and they kind of get some new duds to go out there on their journey. And the third thing would be that the futuristic fire Galadriel, more or less. That's kind of like a uh, so like a like a weapon to to kill the queen essentially. Actually, um, that's it. Yeah, that's better. Do you know? I think I like this, but I think it would be a little bit more fairy taley if um, the main character only acquires these as they go forward. Oh, that's so the point. they yeah you know, yeah you're right you're right. They come up a, a, like there's an obstacle that they have to overcome somehow, and then oh that's what it is. Then part of it, of their quest is getting to these items. Well, I don't, mm, I don't think that it should be like that. I think that they should just sort of like they complete the obstacle or they overcome the obstacle, and then as a result, that they find these items that can help them. Okay, that yeah. seems yeah. way more fairy tale ish. Yeah, me. organic. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's, yeah, yeah. that's fair. Okay, so the, so I think the only thing that I, I do think we should have, as far as having something that the character gets, is essentially that weather vein, speak, that future weather vein type of item. Um, did you guys yeah. play the game uh, Shadow of the Colossus? Or have you seen Shadow of the Colossus? I've seen it. I haven't um, played it uh, very closely. I, I've seen like, it was a while ago. I've seen like a, a half playthrough. Okay, but long story short, it's just that the character has this sword that they hold up in the sun and the light, and it aims them towards, kind of vaguely aims them towards like a, a beam of light shines out of that sword towards the monster. And it, it's, not, it's very imprecise, but it kind of gets them, it, it gives them a heading to go. So right. that, that, that's all the character gets basically is that particular item. I don't know. Uh, I, I don't. Item. I don't want it to like. I don't want them to start out with anything. I want them but to they, have to rely on their own, um, like wits, and, and then they come, and then the last item they get would be something that could, they could use to kill the queen, which could be like the weather vane sword, which okay. is something that points them to her. It could be her sword. Okay. Yeah, Ooh, I fun. like that idea. The, her sword. Her, I, I, I like that. It pretty weapon. much makes the most sense. Yeah, like a diamond. That yeah, only diamond can cut a diamond. This, yeah. So, should our character get anything from the tournament other than a pat on the back? 
Well, no, I think, well. Um, maybe the money to, like, go and do stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Um, like the, the, winning the tournament is like it's basically its own reward because they're like okay cool you won you're the one to oh. Oh, Alright. hello oh you there okay, okay sorry, sorry. We lost you. you cut out for uh, a second. yes sorry, did you hear what i said uh, yes uh yeah winning winning the tournament is like pretty much just it's it's its own reward cuz it pretty much decrees that you're the best and you have the right to to go yeah, on this exactly. mission okay yeah. all right then and we'll we'll go with that right like the setting where people are like it's sort of like um, you fend for yourself type situation. Yes. Uh, okay. They're like, you won. Congrats. Now it's all on you, buddy. Have fun. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. I definitely see that. I see the uh, the kind of cut where it's like, yay, they're all cheering for him. Congrats. And all of a sudden, it, it cuts cut cut scene to the door closing behind him or her. Yeah, exactly. Anyway. Okay. All right. That's it then. So, the, uh, but I, yeah, I think you're right. There should be some kind of some money. Uh, pretty much that they were the money to serve, to buy products and things out in the wild. Yeah. Uh, but they're mm -hmm. still on their own. They have to. Yeah, I don't think, okay. I mean, it's not something that really should be focused on necessarily because the audience will understand, okay, so now they're on a mission and right. they have the funds to go and do that stuff. Um, except that they have nothing that really helps them except their own wits. And then, then they embark on finding the stuff. Perfect. I like it. I like it a lot. Uh, and that's, and that's our opening hook. Um, I think also because of that, we can name this character champion or the champion. Not actually give them an actual official name that is known as the champion. Mm -hmm. Okay, so okay, so listen to this. Tell me what you think. So we spend the entire story assuming Liz is very Mandalorian. <laughs> they don't take off their helmet. Of course not. Until the very end. And we spend the entire story assuming that it's a dude. But it's not. You're gonna go full Samus? Yeah. Oh, Samus at the end. Oh, okay. She takes but... off her helmet. It's like, oh. We, I think there's a few other details I was thinking about too. I'm pretty sure Nate's already getting there, but I'll, I'll, I'll uh, assume as much as possible for then. It okay. could be that this person actually wants to get to this queen because they know them. Either they're a friend of theirs, oh. they're, they're, a they're a loved one, uh. something of that nature. That's why they, like that's why that they want this lot. mission. I like it. And they can only do that by being a mercenary. Yes. So pretty yeah. much this person chose this life knowing they would have to win this tournament, doing all this stuff just to go out because they care about this person. Uh, I know it's kind of following that frozen path as far as Elsa and her sister, but it's it's, it's a little it'll be a little darker, a little more brutal, and everything else. And I think yeah. ultimately, in the end, they will have to kill them. But it's it's pretty much that they want to be the one to kill them as opposed to somebody else. Yeah, uh, so get, they we'll think they have to kill them, mm -hmm. but I mean, it's revealed later that they don't have to. Um, but they think they do, and so that's their main driving thing. Like they don't want anyone else to be the one because of like they love them or sure. something. Yeah, and we can have, I mean, if, if I may, if I may, we could even have flashbacks um, that do show, mm, not, 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 I know, the, the, the thing, okay. what I was thinking of was, is pretty much, yeah, we, we have to, ignore me, we have to establish later on, or it's almost like we have like a B storyline going along, a parallel story, it's showing like in the past, showing just these two kids are, having some kind of relationship with each other. We don't even know who they are really. Or, or maybe we maybe that we don't even know even even know that's a flashback. But we're seeing these two kids interacting with each other and seemingly having seemingly having a good life with one another. Um, and it could be that those two kids are actually our hero and our our villain, essentially. And so, it could be either they're they're love with each other, or they're friends, their family, whatever it is. I like it, but I don't because I I want the end to come as something of a surprise. I want I do, there to be like a bit of a subversion. I don't want the audience to put it together. I do too. Quickly, you know? Yes. And the fairy tales don't have flashbacks. Well, well we can it's sort we can of adjust that. It's yes. very linear. I guess what it is, is that we, we have to have basically an exposition dump at the end with the, where the, well, once the helmet's off, like, you know, I'm your, I was your best friend. Remember, we grew up together. I well, think can... it'll be a little... Well, I, we, we could, um, so pulling from recent, um, uh, recent pop culture thingies, um, I think, uh, I think we, we may want to go maybe a little Witcher on it and have it be where there are some flashbacks, but there are flashbacks of the queen's motivation. So you're seeing the story yeah. of how the queen got to be where she is. And there is another character involved who is female 
And because of societal norms and everything, we think our main champion is a male, so we never make the connection that it is this yes. person. And then at the yes. end, there's the reveal that it is actually this person when she pulls off the helmet yes. and she says, yes. I am this person. I now, love that's, it. A, that's, that's, that, that's it. perfect. And here's, the, here's the thing. That's more or less what I was trying to say. But I didn't say this. Well, so, yeah, <laughs> that's exactly what I was trying to say. But 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 I, but yes, I, I love it. I, I love it. Uh, yes, perfect, beautiful, um, beautiful. Um, awesome. We could have it also that uh, because we don't have to use any kind of tricks to show that the, that the the flashbacks are in the past. We can make it seem like it's just a concurrent storyline or separate elsewhere. This story is happening. Mm-hmm. We don't, as far as we know, we don't even know that the person we're, this story we're seeing even is. The queen that even is the person that caused this ice uh, storm to happen. Right, because we don't see the queen until the end. Right. I mean, yeah. well, we do see her in like flashbacks, but we don't see like her final form. Maybe. <laughs> right. Right. We don't see. We don't see her final form. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. We don't see her Super Saiyan four until the end. So we actually don't know. Like Witcher, we don't know that this actually is the bad guy. As far as we can tell, this person actually. In fact, we can make it a very much a tragic, uh, a tragic villain where the story, their story seems. Uh, very good. So I think after we have our cold open, a literal cold open where our champion wins and is and is sent out into the Arctic tundra, then we we cut to this other story of this person. Um, of, I guess the story of the, the queen's uh, origin, essentially. Yeah, how she... I really. Mm, you know what, guys? I want to see this in theaters. I really do. <laughs> I don't even know how it really ends yet, and I want to see it. And it's so yeah. good. So <laughs> good job. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, so we so we have uh, the, the the opening scene established. We have our beginning going for our first act, and obviously, the beauty of the fairy tale is we don't necessarily need to have like Ari said, exact markers. The person is just going forward, just going towards. Mm-hmm. And I, I like the idea of it being a little more vague as far as he's he or she is just heading towards the coldest point. Mm-hmm. So, um, you guys want to focus now on the story of our hero hero's journey or the focus of the, the story the villain's origin story um i think hero's story protagonist story first because then once we have that hammered out we can sort of interject the villain backstory um where necessary okay all right perfect and actually that may be yet yeah, maybe easier to kind of like actually do that as far as it pertains to show a parallel in that person's life way i got you i got you uh okay so the first thing like i said before it does seem this person's going to need some items on the journey, um, even though they're not spelled out, but it, they're, he's going to come across different types of things that will give him items. Mm-hmm. So we can, the, way we, the way we can write it is basically we can, we can write it knowing that he's going to get to, towards, get certain MacGuffins along the way. So one thing that we wanted him to have was the, the ice sword that's special enough to take her down. We wanted him to have her yeah. or she to have like a, some kind of armor or a, a cloak that makes him warmer. And we wanted them to have like a, a special kind of device that helps them figure out the best way to kind of go through the path of the, of the uh, maybe a hidden path in the in the snow to towards this person. Oh, hey, here's an idea. Okay, like that. Um, I think we should limit. I should. I think that the, the like the homing beacon type situation should be the queen's sword. Uh, and maybe we have a Sleeping Beauty situation where where um our hero she needs to cut through like a bramble yep. or like an ice thing and the yep. only thing that can do that is yep. the sword perfect oh perfect. nice okay so okay. That a big part of the story this character already knows that what they're going what their goal is is to get this ice sword i imagine mm-hmm. yeah okay. they need the sword they know they need the sword or they find out that they need the sword in the middle of the journey that they need it in order to get to the queen and that's why everybody else is <gasps> Ooh, Ari, please, 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 I, I, I must, I must. My birthday is is coming up next month. And okay, if I birthday ahead. present, please let me say this. Please let me say this out loud. What if we go a little hardcore uh, Mando in that the this person is traveling through the Arctic snow and everything, and they get to a town, and they pretty much, they pull out some kind of a device or something to show an item on it. And they, he pretty much points at it saying, where is this? He, he may go into a tavern or a bar, something, saying, I need this. Or he goes to a person or another king or what have you saying, I need this item. Do you know where this is? Make it clear that he's looking for something. He has an image of it, or he has some kind of, there's so, to show, to, some way to show that he's looking for something in particular, even if you don't know what it is, show that he's looking for something. Mm-hmm. And have him going to go to people 
either in a town or a, a, a kingdom or like a big, huge monster, even someone that he believes or she believes can lead them to that towards that item. Uh, so she would be showing like a, the, a, a person instead of an item. No, it would like a, you know you've seen Pirates of the Caribbean, the yeah. second one. Jack has that um that key. It's on a it's on like a torn piece of piece of cloth, and he shows that torn piece of cloth to different people as far as trying to find that key, something like that. In that the we don't even know what the object is in this picture, um, but this character has it with them, and they're and they're showing it to different people. I mean, even even have a montage of him going to different little villages along the way, showing different people trying to find, showing Im an image, this image to different people, mm -hmm. asking about asking around about this item. Um, and we don't even know what it is necessarily. It's a MacGuffin, but he's trying to find it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, as, as so it's a, it's a quick little montage. It can be a little, you know, two little montage, two two minute or so little montage of music playing as he's going to different villages and different icy terrain. We see him going over different mountains and whatnot as he's going further on the journey, and he finally ends up um, like in this cave um, mm -hmm. or whatnot. And he's there, and um, this big huge monster or whatnot is like is like why are you here? Yada yada yada. And he pretty much holds up that image. And the monster could, could literally laugh in his face like, a, uh, you, what, what makes you think you deserve that kind of thing? Uh, and that's going to be a fight. It could happen or, or some kind of exchange. But I like the idea of, of this character looking for MacGuffin once they leave uh, the village, mm -hmm. the, the kingdom, after winning the uh, tournament. I, mm, I like it, but I feel like it belongs in a different... Uh -huh. um, I... I... I don't. I like the idea that the only goal that this character has that she has is, a, she needs to find the queen. Yes. And the way, and and that's what that's her goal while leaving the kingdom. Okay. And along the way, she discovers stuff. She doesn't have like a concrete goal in mind. Uh, I mean, a uh, thing in mind. Um. Until well, be, she... that, that could be it then. How about she actually, that's the first thing, the first stop would be she would actually get information from people as far as what do I need? Yeah, but I yeah. feel like she gets the information from the encounters, which is a very fairy tale thing. Like, oh God, I don't have, I need an example. Like maybe she comes across, take this with a grain of salt. She comes across a dragon um, who when defeated can give her the information. Um, but but yes, I just don't think it should be happenstance. I don't think that that character should hap that coincidentally come across a monster that conveniently knows. I think they should because if if that's the case, then nobody else, or maybe ooh, or maybe she comes across like the corpse of someone who tried before. There we um, go. Yep. Oh that's yeah. It. Okay. And that's that it. that's that's, it. that's what tips them off that they uh, that she needs something else. She needs like a, the sword, which I'm sure will become the information will become available to her then uh yes. in some capacity that she'll find something because the, the the path this character she's following is the coldest stream of air essentially or the the, the deepest snow and that kind of stuff so she so knows yeah. we know where she's going because it's getting colder that's the biggest thing yeah. um and so and, and along that path she comes across a corpse um and so yeah. on that corpse she would find something that would lead her kind of be the, the next clue towards what she needs to do next i like that yeah. idea a lot yeah mm -hmm. yep i like yeah. that yeah, I like that as well. Um, and it, and it, and 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 it also it also like like I was saying before, really kind of helps with the pacing because right before that, we we just had the the big tournament thing, and then you know just goes right into you know um, into that kind of helps with the with the pacing as well. So I think that works really well. Yeah. Yes, I agree. Okay. All right. So the corpse. Um, what? clue do you think it would be that points them or where do you see this clue or this corpse pointing oh, the person good question <laughs> me have an idea well, well, has no idea how well, to flush it out um um i think so well, maybe it's like a sorry go ahead you oh, you, you just... well i was i was gonna say um it could be a thing i i like the idea of it ethan like you said it being a MacGuffin in the way that uh like she she finds out what it is and she's like, Oh shit, I gotta go for that. And it's and it's like yes. a known thing. Yes. Like it's a known thing that everybody knows. Yes. But like like yeah. oh, this oh, thing. The lore. It's like really difficult and yeah. and stuff. They just don't know 
uh, uh w- what it has been what it can be used for yeah right yeah okay so, well one thing we were saying it's a corpse what if it's not a corpse as much as a dying person um but because a dying person could also give some information as opposed to i mean either they could find information on the person's dead body or they could tell them a few things to uh, go out of the way i oh. like the idea of a dying person but logistically how would that they'd have to be dying for a real long time well, <laughs> it's possible. It's possible. It's possible. Um, okay. Well, I, li- I, I, well, I like the idea. Uh, I, I like the idea of finding something on the corpse and have it be. And and we don't just because just because this is set in the future. I don't think we have to make everything futuristic. I think this can be something like a like a like an image scrawled on a piece of paper or something like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then have it be that they they find like they they're searching them to be like okay, well maybe I can get some you know. Like maybe I can uh, 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 get some ammo or whatever the hell it is you get off corpses mm-hmm. in the future. Right. Um, and and they find this thing and then they realize like, oh, this was the champion before me. That, and... that, that, that's exactly what I was thinking. That's yeah. exactly what I was thinking. Yes. 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 That's exactly what I was thinking. Love it. Yep. Love it. Awesome. Uh, yes. And so that's what it could be is that pretty much he realizes that whatever he finds on this other champion is a clue because obviously they're on the same mission that he was or she was. She uh, was. To begin with. Yes, mm-hmm. she was. Um, okay, perfect. Um, the we don't have to get in, we don't have to get into the details of what that actual item is. Yeah, that... but where where do you think it would? What direction do you think it would point this champion into next? Towards next? Uh, south. I think it's south would be the direction it would get. No, I'm kidding. Take the four hundred five. Oh, not the four hundred five. Not this time of night. Not this time. Oh God. Uh, but yeah, that works. Um. um... I, Okay, good. I think what we could do here is stick with me for a moment. We could have it that whatever the the item that this person sees almost like a match cut in some capacity or whatever the item this find this person finds on the previous champion, it could kind of lead us to um transitioning into the queen's origin story mm-hmm. in some capacity. Yeah. Like say for example oh. he finds this, he finds like a, a holy grail on this person. Then we can do, uh, do a match cut to the queen holding the, the, the not holding the, the holy grail, but something as far as connects to that to kind of connect these two stories in a way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, li- I like that idea because then it um, that kind of opens up that opens up a second like a, like a like again with the you know I'm all about pacing. Um, again, it it, <laughs> it 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 opens up into the origin story of the queen, which then we can start doing those flashbacks and all those other like little seeded things. Um, throughout the story um maybe even have it be where like like i I, i'm i'm just envisioning in my head the the character pulling out the piece of paper looking at and seeing the drawing and being like oh god and you know trying to figure and like establish that it's a difficult thing to find it's a thing of lore and then it's it's a shot of the item and then the shot fades into the actual pick of uh uh, film of the item and then the queen picking the item up right that's that's what i was thinking i like it I, like but, but I was, I was, my only reluctance to do it where it's a direct cut on a form to the actual item is I didn't want it to be tipping our hand too much mm-hmm. as far as to show that this is oh, two true, different true, time true, periods. True, true. How, however, however, that might not be the case because the audience might see that and think, oh, what we're seeing is we're seeing that item in my in present time. Is this is where the item is? Yeah. As opposed yeah. to yeah. Okay. Yeah. So so, so maybe I, yeah. yeah maybe and maybe not make it something that's like obviously like you know uh like the the fires of of right you know who jim dealing um yeah yeah um uh, the you know like have it not be that thing like have it maybe be something like fairy tales tend to do where you have like the thimble or the spinning wheel or the like yeah. everyday yeah, normal yes. objects it's an ne- everyday normal object and this person is like, ah, oh, crap, I got to find it. And like, as an audience, we could be thinking like, oh, well, that's like finding a needle in a haystack because apparently they need to find the, the, the this special needle. And then, you know, and then the, the it's you see the needle and it could just be, you know, so I think I like that idea of making it a mundane object that's actually holds a lot of power. Yes, right. I, right. I love it. Right. OK. Um, yes. Um, OK, so. Now it would be the fun thing because it feels like we're getting into our, the origin story for our queen. So, yes. what could be an item? Can, I think it'd be, it'd be kind of fun if we kind of reverse engineer this. What could be a fun, uh, a special item that seems mundane but is unique uh, 
to this queen that could also kind of be part of her story as to how she could become what she is. Obviously, with Sleeping Beauty, it's the thimble that she, or the, sorry, the, uh, the spinning wheel, the sewing needle that she pricks. Um, with Rapunzel, it's obviously her hair, but something that's seemingly uh, simple that, that mm. could almost be like the totem for this particular character. Mm. I'm thinking maybe something to do with winter. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, let's see. The, the earmuffs of eternity. Um. The... <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Hmm. yeah. Um, and it, it, it doesn't have to be something small, so small that it's, they can hold it in their person. It could be something, it, an image that we're seeing as well, but just something uh, that's mm-hmm. unique. Um, and you said pertains to winter. Let's see what pertains to winter that a person would... <laughs> I keep thinking of silly shit, like, like the snow shovel of destiny, you know. That's what, um, that's what I thought of, too, the uh, snow shovel. So that's the dumbest thing I ever uh, thought of. But... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, God, you're a handsome man. Okay, let's see here. Uh, well, the, what if it's something like we can we can start off simpler, like maybe even like a key. Um, Ooh, I like the key idea because it's the key to her heart. Of I course, mean, what? of course. <laughs> <laughs> but it, oh. it could be something like a little more the the image that the person if we, if we're going with the idea that it's like a scroll or whatnot that the hero finds, mm-hmm. it could be a key, a basic looking key. So when we do the tra- the cut on form to the queen's timeline, the key could look a little different or a little more sp- special, whatnot. So it's almost like he's looking for his own type of key, and this is this oh, other okay. character's own type of key. So it's not too spot on type of type of situation. It's it's more it is a it's a transition. Yeah, it's not it doesn't have to be specific or exact. That's the whole point. Yeah, and then and then maybe tip the hand later that it is the same key because of yes. you know yeah what, what you know uh, oxidation. I don't know something. Um, like that, yeah. I mean, it could be encased in ice and and ha- have it look like something completely different. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, actually, you know what it could be too. Now that that <laughs> no, I was thinking of it, if it was like two parts. Like for example, if he saw a picture of the treasure chest, then he cut to a picture of the of the key for the treasure chest, something like that. Like it's it's like a, uh, you know a can and a can opener kind of thing, but um, uh-huh. that's not going to work either. Well, okay. the key could be broken. Yes. Oh, there's that. <gasps> oh, I, I have an idea. I have an idea. Okay. Because we're dealing with a queen. What if the item that the that that our our hero sees is more or less like an instrument, like a horn or something like that, or something that looks like a horn? So that way, our transition is to a in the kingdom, like a royal ball. Someone playing an instrument, and then we see the we, and then we kind of fade over to our queen, and she's dancing or whatnot. So it's not. So you don't even really necessarily think really directly associated to as far as being specific, but that oh, thing yeah. that was more as a horn is a very specific particular instrument or horn that actually does do something later on in the story. Um, yeah. Something I, well, like I, that. I, I like, well, I like, I like the idea where you're going, where, where it's, it's something like, like what, what this person has to find is the queen's horn, but what they transition to is like you said, a horn of somebody playing or what I thought of a harp, um Perfect. if you want if you want to go full fairy tale um because you know because a queen playing a horn you know right yeah um where yes. playing a harp that's a little bit more um you know uh uh appropriate yeah part of the trope yes. tropey ish um, sure yeah, yeah. For, it's, it is fairy tale yeah and i think i think what it is too is that this is the first item we don't have to have just one item this particular if we're going back by zelda rules this harp <laughs> opens up this uh you play this harp at a certain river and it causes the the you know the the monster of the river to, to pick you up and take you across the river. Kind oh of man, so are we doing like a hundred percent ocarina of time type stuff? Uh, I wouldn't mind that, but I, but I mean I just as I mean just as an example, it's, 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 this isn't the end game item. It's mm-hmm. the beginning of the story. This is the first MacGuffin, so it's just the first thing to get the story going further. Yeah. So I think yeah. it should be an instrument of some kind. Uh, let's go with a harp. Why not? Let's yeah. say it's a harp. I like it. Yeah, yeah it's a it's a simple enough idea. It's kind of like it's unwieldy but very fairy tale. Yeah. Oh, and even better, the image that we see of this harp doesn't look like a harp. It, it's, it could be like a simple, like circ- a half circle with like a whole bunch of lines. And it's not until you see the cut on form that, that it looks more like actual official harp, essentially. Yeah, and, and remember, it can be like, again, we're in the future. So it could be like one of these, like a light harp or something like that, where like it's, yes. you yeah, know, yeah, like yeah. It's, it's a heart, that, a heart, a harp that, you know, is, is has lasers, you know, like, I don't know, like we can figure it out. You know? Right, exactly. Exactly. Uh, I love it. Perfect. Okay. 
Yeah, so that's what it is then. So it's some kind of an item. So the, on the hero's journey, this item that he's going after next is something he will use to help him get further. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm saying he because it's the way the audience will think about him. The hero will use to help him get further along. Uh -huh. uh, let me cut to the queen at the ball. So now that we're on the queen's storyline, this is the origin. Remember, it's the, the, the origin of her, how she break, why she breaks bad, or what the tragedy that happened that befalls her to cause her to go uh, to do what she does or whatnot. Do we right. want this queen to start off as a regular person? Should it even be a queen? Should it be a princess? Because we are in the past, too. Yeah. So, I, I, I'm a fan of keeping it kind of simple. So my initial response is that she's already queen. Okay. She's already queen. And then something happens for her to turn bad. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. I like that. Um, I think it's, I think the queen should seem... We should like the queen, too. They should be a, a benevolent, friendly person. We should like them. We should not yeah. We should be yeah. sad that this, ha this bad thing happens to them. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. And yeah. since we're starting out at a, at a... It could be... Since we're at a big, huge gala, it's a ball of some kind. Um, there's lots of people there. Anything can happen, more or less. Uh -huh. but do, you want, do, do we want something to happen actually at the ball? Can I get the ball well, rolling, so to speak? Well, do I... <laughs> Well, it does, like you know, we could handle it in a couple of different ways. It it could be the 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 ball is it could function in the same way that the tournament functioned in introducing the characters of this section of the story, um, and then the actual event happens afterwards, uh, or it could be that that the event happens there. I I kind of feel like it should if if we're kind of doing a, a like it it's more elegant if we treat it like the way the tournament was treated where. It's it's the introduction piece, but the event doesn't happen at the ball. Um, it happens maybe soon after or what have you. But I think this should be the introduction point where we introduce her. We introduce who we will later find out to be the champion, um, mm -hmm. and as mm -hmm. well as uh, like maybe one or two other ancillary characters that kind of flesh out this whole section and also int introduce the pretend potential conflict, which. You know, it's like the easy thing is to say spurned by love, but I really, you know, I, I don't, uh, nah, nah. Um, yeah, I kind of want to yeah. subvert that trope a little bit because, because yeah. we've already done so much subverting, and I'm, I'm like a little sick and tired of like blah women go crazy because love blah. Yeah, yeah. Right. right, yeah, right. exactly. Um, yeah, no, I agree with that entirely. I think what we can do at the on a on a much more bigger macro level is take advantage of the way the story is structured and have it happen be kind of opposites. We saw the protagonist, we saw her, or our hero, having to go through a tournament for, for dear life and survive. And it was, mm -hmm. a, it was a pretty much a rough, bad situation that they start off in. We see this queen in a very pleasant situation. See, it's a very happy gala, things of that nature. And it's kind of how we can, we can kind of show that dynamic of these two stories, uh, more or less. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, that works. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That works. Um, I, so, I, I guess Maybe, the... I mean, that seems like... So, we've kind of figured out the hero's motivation... Mm -hmm. But I think the villain's motivation is going to be um, a, a really important part and would will take a while. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We, we don't need to know that yet. So maybe yeah, we, we you know, we can, we can tackle that a little later. Yeah. yeah I agree. I yeah. agree. That's a, this, that's a, that's a pretty solid opening right there though. Yeah. Pretty solid opening. Yeah. We I, have, I, we have, I think uh, so too. And actually, and, um, and we're uh, speaking of fairy tales, we're all about to turn into pumpkins. Um, so our, our, uh, <laughs> oh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, so I think that's a, a pretty good run. We got, um, uh, so we've got the, the main character, we got the queen, we got the, uh, at least the general, um, uh, uh, motivation of the, of the champion, uh, though the details we haven't figured out. And uh, and then we're we're we we have a thing that the the person needs to go find, and then also we've got the setup of the queen. So I think um, yeah, I think we've we we've done good. <laughs> we have yes, yeah. We have a that's a good that's a good little uh good little start, good good opening act, so to speak, yes. for our for our story here. Yes. Um. So uh, so just to thank everyone again for checking us out. If you were a part of the live stream, thank you very much for listening to for watching us and listening to us on a live stream. Uh, if you're listening to the podcast the old-fashioned way, thank you very much for doing that. Um, please come back next week. Uh, same bat channel, same bat time. We will get into part two and act two of Once Upon a Once, a, Once Upon a Future Cold. <laughs> Once, <laughs> Once Upon, upon a, future, a Future Cold. Cold. <laughs> As opposed to hot, which is a dollar <laughs> fifty extra. 
Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> so thank you all, and uh, yeah, uh, catch you all next week. <laughs>